I suppose it's less of a question, more of a comment. Um, uh, so I am looking at stuff that isn't a million miles away uh, in, in certain parts of that anyway. Um, and I thought maybe it'd be interesting to compare. Um, for example, you talked a little bit about a sort of qubit, if you like, or qubit, um, quantum computation being related to uh, CV quantum computing. And indeed, um, at the moment, I've uh, we're working with uh, Stefano Gagosio, um, tried to come up with a calculus for, for CV quantum computing by taking QDIT constructions and then uh, using non-standard analysis to um, say take a parameter d to an infinite number, uh, some hyperfinite number. That's not hyperfinite in terms of von Neumann algebras. It's uh, unfortunate okay. uh, they have the same name, but. Um, I know I found some clarity in this direction, and perhaps uh, you might as well. Um, yeah, merely a comment on that section and the uh, work I've done in that direction too. Okay, thanks. Uh, I will take a note uh, actually after this presentation so that uh, I can check it. Um, also, one of the main concerns about uh, um, this approach, I mean, studying geometrical models in the case of infinite dimensions, is also that some of the orthodox, so to say, geometrical representations for quantum computational processes, such as the block sphere, actually um, are not adequate anymore in some cases. Uh, because the, uh, when I started developing this uh, paper, uh, one of the first concern was in uh, the topological aspects of the problem, firstly in general quantum, me in quantum mechanics in general. And actually, when we try to represent, for example, what happens in a, a projective Hilbert space, complex Hilbert space, which is basically what we use when we introduce rays in our state space, um, and we try to obtain a homomorphism uh, to a sphere, if the dimension of the Hilbert space is, for example, n, um, then the homomorphic sphere will not be actually a sphere anymore. It is a much more complex. Uh, it is a much more complicated geometrical uh, topological um, manifold. Uh, so okay, thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. I will. I will take a note of that, and I'll check that immediately after. <laughs> so, for our further question. So, please, Vincenzo. Uh moment yes can you hear me yes yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh thank you very much uh, enrico for this presentation my uh i'm not a really question but an observation you mm -hmm. you spoke about very interesting things but uh, at half of your presentation i was not able to understand <laughs> anymore <laughs> but, because you put i am not very intelligent you know you know well but you put together a lot of things and, uh, and, and much of the things I understood are very, very interesting. Perhaps in, in 20 minutes or half an hour, you, it is better that you concentrate yourself on a couple of things. So it is uh, easier to for us to, to say something. But uh, I have anyway a, a question about the first part. I am, I am really interested about the problem you, you posed at the beginning, that is uh, the problem of uh, the unbounded observables in, uh, mm -hmm. in Hilbert space. Uh, we know that uh, these problems, that these observables like uh, position and the momentum, uh, in a certain sense, uh, have, have measure uh, 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 zero for each point. Uh, of space and each point of the space of moments, uh, so there is a, a physical problem, or, or not not a physical problem. There is a, quest a question of principle because uh, we know that the particle is somewhere, and uh, to this problem there are different solutions. Uh, someone very complex like rigged uh, Hilbert space, uh, someone much more simple like von Neumann at the beginning, uh, he, he makes a sort of smearing of the position in, in Hilbert space, and so uh, so you can find uh, tricks to to avoid the problem. But but I am persuaded that from uh, in a, a ontological point of view, it's not completely without. Uh, 
uh, interest because uh, in a certain sense uh, uh, we know that in quantum mechanics there is, is a strange uh, uh, tension between continuum and, and, and discretum so uh, perhaps uh, in, in this problem there is something uh, very deep uh, I, I, I am the only one that, that thinks this I, I believe because when I presented this kind of ideas in a, in a, in a, in a in the Congress in Rome uh, a couple of years ago, many physicists and philosophers say, told me that it's not so interesting. But I have the feeling that it is not completely devoid of, you know, of interest. Uh, so I, I, uh, I would like to know your, your opinion on this, and in particular on this paper of von Neumann about uh, this uh, continuity, geo continu geometrical continuity, no, not, the, not the, the one about uh, uh, of 27 about the knowledge between mm -hmm. geometry and quantum mechanics that I, I knew very well because the uh, book uh, translated by Rossella. Mm -hmm. But the other one you quote uh, exactly, it is one, if you can say something about this paper. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, about the first problem, about the first question, um, well, actually, I think it is a problem too. So, I don't think it is quite. I don't think it is a strange problem or something like this. Um, now, about uh, bounded and unbounded operators, first of all. When they are introduced, I mean, I know, um, well, basically, textbook presentations of quantum mechanics uh, all adopt bounded operators. And uh, as far as I know, they uh, came out in that paper by von Neumann, uh, Hilbert and Northeim. Now, actually, they do not define it. Um, I can see that uh, boundless conditions um, allow to simplify um, the formalism, so to say, because when we uh, decompose the operator, basically, uh, then we can develop, uh, um, well, then we have a series of functions and uh, the convergence of the series uh, uh, allows us basically to have uh, some, an approximation of the function, so to say, through, the series, through a series expansion. So convergence from a mathematical point of view uh, might actually be a, might actually be introduced due to pragmatical reasons. I mean, because we have to use these functions in some way. About the continuous and the uh, and the discrete uh, um, opposition. Now, actually, <laughs> this is I don't have a solution to this problem. I mean, I don't know how to answer because. I have some ideas, but I think that they might be uh, there. There are plenty of uh, uh, of counterexamples and objections to what I actually think. Um, because, for example, this there is this. Uh, well, first of all, we have to define what is discrete. So, if we had discrete in the sense of the outcome of a measurement process, uh, for example. Uh, as opposed to the evolution of the state in the case of uh, Schrodinger equation, uh, as it is expressed by Schrodinger equation. Uh, then we are referring to the whole debate about uh, Eisenberg cut uh, and uh, uh, Copenhagen interpretation and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and also, uh, it actually do not, well, quantum computation, in my opinion, has uh, a more, <laughs> A less problematic view on this point, probably, because the evolution or yeah the evolution of the qubit state in a compute in the uh, computational network is not uh, actually described uh, as far as I know by a Schrodinger equation. So we have a series of a sequence of steps in the computational process. So uh, at each step we have uh, an interaction with a device, for example, and so we have an operation which is performed on the, on the qubit state. Um, the second question, sorry, I forgot it. <laughs> if you can, uh, if you can restate it just very briefly, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I can't hear it. I can't hear you. Vincenzo? Sorry. Yes, sorry, sorry. I, I, I forgot to, to switch on my microphone. Okay. Yes, but it is a, a curiosity about 1937 paper by Fonoim. Oh. I, I didn't. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. 
Carol Lambert, thank you. Uh, it is actually not a paper, a, a paper properly speaking, it is a, a series of lectures which Fonoma taught uh, in 1937. And uh, um, in this paper, well, there are actually uh, basically two different series of lectures about continuous geometry. Uh, in the first one, which is the one I'm referring right now, he defines a mathematical theory of uh, in operator uh, theory, basically, of uh, continuous geometry. Uh, his main purpose is basically to build up uh, an operator theory for in order to treat uh, type two uh, factors, basically, which can occur in some situations. For example, in uh, uh, quantum statistical mechanics, uh, it is, uh, usually we have uh, we can have uh, type two factors. Uh, one of the examples is the infinite spin chain. Ah, okay, okay, and so this is a paper on on, uh, on type two factors. Yes, yeah, yes, it yes. is. Well, yeah, basically for when we dream this, for this nine, the yes. famous for Neumann dream. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, and secondly, uh, there is this second ser series of lectures, which, if I remember correctly, the title is uh, "Continuous Geometry with with Transition Probabilities," where he also um, introduces a particular interpretation, a logical interpretation for the probability function from a mathematical point of view, uh, which is then uh, restated by Jeffrey Bob in that paper, which I, uh, which I, uh, which I cited before, uh, as a way to give some kind of new foundation of quantum probabilities in the, in the 70s. But this is another kind of problem, and it is also quite problematic itself in phenomena. Uh, philosophy, if so to say, because uh, we know that phenomena actually uh, adopted a particular version of Fermi's uh, um, frequentist interpretation of probabilities in quantum mechanics. So the problem is, why does he, uh, at a certain time, decides to change to the, log to the logical interpretation? And does he accept this logical interpretation entirely, as Bob, as Bob suggests, suggests, or it is more complicated, actually, from a from a historiographical point of view, so to say. Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, sorry, guys, we are uh, a little short on time. There is a last comment by Richard. So, please, oh, okay. Richard. Cool. Uh, hi. Uh, so, basically, it was a comment on that comment. <laughs> uh, I also believe there is a problem with uh, unbounded in the definition of operators, and um, I suppose I'd reiterate the point I was making earlier with reflection to um, with. Um, pointing people at non-standard analysis and hyperreal numbers. Indeed, um, I suppose firstly, in terms of uh, continuity and discreteness. Uh, if I was to view discreteness in terms of uh, something like integers, through um, techniques in non-standard analysis, you can view the real numbers as merely a scaling of the integers, um, mm -hmm. done in a clever enough and slightly weird enough way. And in that sense, you can view continuity as a degenerate case of, uh, of uh, mm -hmm. discreteness. On top of that, I, I suppose I, I have a vaguely loose conjecture these days, which maybe one day I'll die trying to prove. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that there's been some work in defining categorical versions of quantum mechanics. Um, and they say, OK, it's a dagger Frobenius, uh, symmetric dagger Frobenius monoid. And I think if you go down that route and try to do something in terms of extending it to continuous, you might go to rigged Hilbert spaces, as has been mentioned. And, uh, there's a very, there's a large number of other techniques people have died to try to use. Um, but I think a cleverer thing to do, or maybe more cunning, is to instead of changing the algebra you're working with, change the number system associated with the algebra and move to hyperreal numbers. Uh, and in that way, perhaps, um, well, I conjecture that uh, a dagger symmetric Frobenius algebra over star Hilbert, that is uh, the hyperreal Hilbert space, is perhaps the correct place to do uh, unbounded quantum mechanics. Uh, but just uh, but it's pretty vague stuff. I mean, oh, I yes, I, I am happy that there's some someone uh, someone that uh, <laughs> think about this problem. <laughs> thank you very much. Really lurking in the shadows, but I don't know how successful I am. <laughs> no, thank you. It was very very interesting. Actually, I I hadn't studied uh, categorical quantum mechanics, so which is one of my dreams actually to study them, uh, to study this uh, field. Uh, but I didn't have time <laughs> exams and all the rest. But this might be actually interesting. I wonder what would be the philosophical problems which from uh, um, from the philosoph philosophy of mathematics uh, uh, 
point of view. So, so. Uh, I just spoke things about real numbers uh, being not real, and, and is it okay to add infinite numbers now? It's also questionable. And secretly, I only believe yeah. in rational numbers. But, uh, oh. <laughs>